Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for being with us. We thank you for this special day, this communion that we are celebrating your life here on earth, your death, and your soon coming. Please continue to be with us. I grew up a Seventh-day Adventist. I've celebrated communion for many years. I think many years I've celebrated it. But I don't know that we have or still know why. Perhaps like the Jews and the Pharisees of old with the Sabbath and with the sacrifices, we have lost our meaning even though Jesus said, remember. In the late 1800s, our church went through problems and they, they forgot what, what it was all about. They celebrated, but they didn't know. And they shipped Mrs. White off to Australia. Wagner and John <coughs> eventually left the church. Mrs. White said if they had got the communion service right, that Jesus would have come in the late 1800s, but because he did not just like the Israelites of old who wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Here we are wandering how many years? Over 100 years. Now the signs are pointing that things are coming to a head, but will we be ready? So what went wrong? Well, James White had a poster. I'm sure you see it. It's for evangelistic. Think over here, poster. It started out with Adam and Eve in the garden, and it came all the way through the timeline. It came through the Israelites, the Ten Commandments, the cross, all the way to our time, and Jesus coming in right in the middle of it. It was right in the middle, very large, in the middle. We didn't have a kind of a picture in our The Ten Commandments, right? Later on, after the 1880s, Ellen White also made a poster. Same poster. We start out with Adam and Eve. You can see it on this side, Adam and Eve in the garden. And all through the Israelites, the Ten Commandments, Christ, sacrifice and dying on the cross, all the way to the Christ coming again. And what was the difference? What was in the middle? The cross, the cross was great. Isn't that interesting? what happened. We, after 1844, we had good light, didn't we? I have here a book. It's an older book. It only has 27 beliefs here. The pillars of our church. Shall we read some? The Trinity, creation, the great controversy. We even have the Lord's Supper in here, the law of God, the Sabbath. All these are here. And they had them in the 1880s, didn't they? So what, again, what wrong? Remember what's happening in the last days? The parables that Jesus gave us? The ten virgins? Remember, they're virgins. They're in the church. So we have the wise ones over here and the foolish ones over here. And what about the sheep and the goats? We have the sheep here and the goats here. What happened to the wise and the sheep? Going to heaven, aren't they? What about the goats and the foolish? Uh -huh. And then I think what was prophesied in our church, you know, we are a victim of prophecy, aren't we? So what is our church? Revelation 2 and 3. I wish we were maybe Ephesus or Philadelphia, but what are we? What did Mrs. White even confirm that we are? We're all naked here. Why am I standing behind this podium? <laughs> Fortunately, we're also blind, yes. so we can't see all these naked, perhaps people. A blind person up here, he would look out and he'd think everybody had clothes on, wouldn't he? But we don't. So what happened? And also, we think, what did the church lay in the city we need? We need to buy gold. Faith and love, white raiment, that's the purity and character of Christ's righteousness, his grace, 
and I staff so that we can see. Wisdom to see between good and evil. But you know, it doesn't talk about what the church of Laodicea did have and does have. How against Jesus felt, you know, you've got that. We don't need to talk about that. We need to talk about what you need. So today, I'm going to give you a test. Now, it's not going to be a real hard test, although they failed it in 1888. <laughs> but we're way beyond that, aren't we? And we all have been to school. Has anybody here had tests in school? I'm sure you all have a test in school. And what I found in school through college, one of the easiest questions was the true and false. And even if you didn't know it, it could be about physics, or you didn't know where you got a 50 50 chance of getting it, right? That's right. Well, here comes medical school. And they had a different idea about true and false questions. But anyway, this is a true and false question test. You will be graded on it to remember. What do we have here? Grace, question, and law. Okay, true or false? Yeah, grace is true. Oh, false. Okay, that's your first option. We'll tell you number one. Okay. Who believes this? I know many churches do. Don't many churches believe we're saved by grace and don't have to have the law? I, I took not only Bible blocks, but what is it, where you've heard about all these different religions? Well, I can do that. So that's your first choice. Your second choice is false. A lot of evidence grew up that way, didn't we? Isn't the law really important? What was grace? It was nailed to the cross, right? That's the way I grew up. And I have a third choice. Now, I did not have a problem with this one, but many of you, I'm sure, had is false. False. Okay, what church is that? Roman Catholic Church, right? Grace? No, we've got the priest, right? The law? What did they do the law? The second commandment's gone. Fourth commandment is changed. Tenth commandment was changed. So that's them. So you got that choice. There you got three choices. But you know, medical school, three choices? Oh, uh, you got to have more choices than that. Let's give choice number four and choice number five. Here we've taken your chances from 50-50 to 20%. Choice number four is true. True. Okay. So what's choice number five? I know y'all have been in medical school. It's also true. True. Now, if you pick the wrong one, you're wrong. So what did you do in medical school to give you this? True, true, and I have to write this small. Related. And what would the other one be? Unrelated. Now, you might think that's simple. Let me give you an example, and I won't use a medical one, we'll just use a common one. Let's make a statement. Let's see, sand hill cranes are birds. Yeah. What do you say? True or false? Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Let's make another statement. Brown bears are bears. True, true, true. Okay. true, true related. True, true unrelated. Okay. True, true related. True, true related. True, true unrelated. Initially, I said, unrelated, one's a bird, one's a bear, but they're both brown, aren't they? Their names both start with bees. They both have hearts, brains. So what are they? Are they related or unrelated? Well, you don't have to answer that question. We're going to move on. Our first ordinance is the ordinance of humility. A lot of churches do not do that. They don't do the worship of the feet, do they? But we do, and why do we do it? Jesus knew that his disciples were having a problem, weren't they? They all wanted to be the greatest. And we kind of have that problem too. How welcoming we would be to Governor DeSantis or to the homeless person. Would we treat them differently? 
Do we treat doctors and lawyers differently than mechanics and carpenters? Do we treat men different than women, different races different? I mean, we have problems with that, but Christ showed by washing the feet that everybody's treated the same. And what about the other thing? Why did he do the washing of the feet? Peter had a problem with that. Don't wash my feet at all. Oh, if you don't wash, well, wash all of me. Okay. Don't need that either. My wife and I, we, Colleen, we like to walk on the beach. We go out early in the morning when it's not too hot, walking on the beach. We're done walking on the beach. What do we need to do? Take showers? Our feet are got sandy. Do we all need to take showers? No. What do we do? We wash our feet. Why do we wash our feet? Because that's part that got sandy. We here live in the world of sin. We are walking on the beach with the sand of sin. And the sand of sin sometimes holds on to us, sometimes it just falls off. But what do we need Christ to do? We to wash our feet. No. Get rid of that little bit of sand that gets stuck. Now we have the harder one. Why did Christ do the bread? The disciples didn't get it, even while they did it. And he started out weeks before. We have a record of that. Let's see. It's in, the, in every... Um, I don't have a paper right with me. Here it is. It's in all the Gospels. Matthew 14, Luke 9, Mark, and John 6. Even the desire of ages. In two chapters, give them to eat. And Christ is in Galilee. Talks about this. What happened? He... Fed the 5,000, right? This is the most. Fed them all. And what did they want to do? Hey, this guy can feed us all, right? He can heal us. He can raise from the dead. He ought to be our king. Oh, he doesn't want to be our king. We're going to make him our king. That's great. Even the disciples were on board with that. What did Jesus have to do? He sent the disciples away on that ship, and they were not happy about that. He sent the people away, and they weren't happy. Remember what happened that night? The disciples were so grumbling. What did Jesus do? He let them have a storm. Took their minds off of all this other stuff. They had to pull together, didn't they? He walked on water. Even Peter walked on the water. The next day, they were at the synagogue. And what did the people want to do then? They came king. Had they learned their lesson? No. And what did Jesus say? I gave you bread. You want to make me king? We fed you in the, the manna in the wilderness. What are all those people in the wilderness that ate the manna? Where are they now? They're all dead. You need to what? Eat my flesh, drink my blood. And what did the people say? He's nah, crazy. You can't do that. And hundreds of disciples left. They were gone. They had to, that was too much for them. In fact, this is why said a lot of them joined the enemies, joined the Pharisees, and they went. And try for part of getting rid of the Jesus even asked his twelve, Are you going to leave me too? So then the weeks followed, he tried to tell them what was going on. They didn't get it. They didn't get it. And here we are back the evening of the Lord's Supper. Here they've done the foot washing. How can he get through their thick skulls? How can he get through our thick skulls? What? What is going on? What does he mean by cannibalism? That's what they, they said here. Eat your flesh, drink your blood. Boy, that's pretty bad. So, what did he mean? Let's re-illustrate here. Today, in a little while, we're going to have these emblems. Now remember, the Catholic Church got this terribly wrong. They said this is his body. This is his actual blood, and many people went to the stake were martyred because they would not agree with that. Even Martin Luther had a harder time with that. It, it was a long time he still believed that. Fortunately, we do not believe it. They're just symbols. So what is the symbol of? Christ's body. What did he say to do with it? What's this? Blood. It's grapes. Yeah. Right? The ceremonial laws, right? What do you say to do with that? Okay. What do I have in this hand? Is there anything in this hand? Do I still have the ceremonial?
remember one of the laws of this hand? But I have this hand. Do I have the Bible? Do I have the Ten Commandments? Do I have the law in this hand? They're gone. So, back in 1888, they had a discussion on Galatians 3. Galatians 3 says the law is abolished. Our dear General Conference said it's got to be the ceremonial laws. And that's what we've taught almost ever since. But these are the ceremonial laws, right? How can they be nailed to the cross? The ceremonial laws are the cross. The ceremonial laws are Jesus. You can't nail it to itself, can you? So it can't, Galatians can't be talking about ceremonial laws. It has to be talking about the moral law, the Ten Commandments. Okay? So what happened to the Ten Commandments? Got away with it. Completely. They're gone. We don't have to obey them. Now, I know some people will wonder about there are some Bible texts where Jesus says, you know, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that, okay. There are also Bible texts that say that we're going to burn forever. And we know how to deal with those Bible texts. So, what do we mean by the law is the bondage? That's what Paul said. That's what Jeremiah said, didn't he? God first gave him the law. Then what did the other flights do with it? Forget that. That wasn't the way to go. We're going to have a new commandment. Let's go back to creation. Before sin, Adam and Eve are walking along in the garden. And you know, it's late afternoon. You know, Jesus is there with them. And he's walking with them. It's a beautiful day. I imagine. We can't even imagine how beautiful it was. And they come out of the woods. And then they're in the big meadow. And there are some wolves and lambs playing together. Lions with the deer. And on the or the end of the middle there is uh, a raise. It's a raise, and across that front raise is granite, a beautiful stone of granite. We can ask Gray. He does catches and bass. He's seen some, I'm sure, some beautiful granite. That, you just, it's beautiful the way the sun's hitting that granite. It's beautiful. And you know what? On that granite, Jesus has written out the Ten Commandments in his own finger. He's written all of them out, and instantaneously, Adam and Eve know how to read. They come up to that, and Jesus says, I want you to come every morning and read these so you can have them. And I want you to come every evening and read them so that you have them. And I want you to tell your children when you have children. Did they understand those Ten Commandments? When, when Adam read, thou should not make any images for God, he said, well, you're right here. Why would I make an image? And Eve read, what is not killing? What is this? Not adultery. What, are, what is this talking about? No. They didn't have it. Did they need it? They didn't need it. Where were those Ten Commandments? The heart. Sorry. Yeah. Right. The heart. The heart. Not too long ago, we talked about in Sabbath school, the book of Hebrews, and in 1844, what happened? Jesus went from the holy place into the most holy place. And what was in the most holy place? Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, right. And what's on top of the Ark of the Covenant? The mercy seat. And what's underneath? Well, the Shekinah of God. The Shekinah presence of Well, and what's underneath? The law. The Thank you. Okay. Right? Amen. Because what happened when Moses built the sanctuary and had, they said it's a type. It looks just, Paul talks about it too. It is a type of what's on heaven. Amen. Right? It's an example. Yeah. It was made with hands, and heaven's made without hands. So, when was that ark made? Was it made three of the maybe three thousand years ago? No. When was that ark made in heaven? From eternity. It must have been. From eternity. We have mercy and we have the law. Remember Adam and Eve? Could they sin? They sure did. But did they know, know what the Ten Commandments were? Yeah, they knew what they were. They were in their heart. They weren't written down anywhere. They were in their heart. Did Jesus have the Ten Commandments? Ooh. Did he need the Ten Commandments? No, he was without sin. He didn't need the Ten Commandments. Did he need to die for himself? No, he didn't need to die for himself. But he was baptized. Did he need to be baptized? No. But he did it for our example. Amen. 
He used the Bible too, didn't he? He read from the Bible. He quoted from the Bible. Did he need that? He knew the Bible, didn't he? He gave the Bible. He knew that we needed that. So he knows that we need the Bible. We need the baptism. But he also knows what else do we need. We need him inside us. And if Christ is inside us, am I going to go rob a bank? Am I thinking about rock? <laughs> My wife and I moved to Florida, to Tennessee. And our neighbor said, you know, things are different here in Florida. In Florida, there's a law in the book that you can't meet your wife. <laughs> a few days later, the policeman came by, and he asked us a question. You know what the question was. And he stopped eating your wife. Because <laughs> he knew we were from Tennessee. <laughs> so what am I going to answer? Now, if I don't really care, if I'm not a Christian, I'd say no. I haven't stopped eating her. <laughs> but if I'm a Christian, what am I going to say? Yes, I've stopped eating her. Is that what I should be saying? <laughs> no. Christ is in me. I never beat that. It didn't cross my mind to me. Did I need that law? No. no. Maybe some other people need that law. <laughs> I didn't need that law. Jesus lives within you. The Ten Commandments are gone. I don't have to even try to keep the Ten Commandments. I don't need to keep the Ten Commandments. Why? Because Jesus is in here. And what did Jesus do while he was on earth? Did he keep the law? Yeah. It was inside it. Now, do we still need the Bible? Yes, Jesus said you need to read the Bible. You need to study it. You need to study Mrs. White's writings. You need those things because you're not as smart as Adam and all those guys were. Remember, after 3,000 years, they, the Lord gave us writing. He gave us writing for a reason because we get dumber and dumber. <laughs> I mean, it's DNA. You can go into that if you want. <laughs> We need Christ in this. So what did they miss back then? They had, on this side, a poster. And what was in the middle of the poster? Large, large, the Ten Commandments. And on this side, this is white side, what was in the middle of her poster? Christ. And what did they need to do? Well, I said it was called that. We're going to put down here... This is the Ten Commandments, and here's the cross. They need to superimpose them. Grace and the law are together. Grace and law are related. Our church, why did not Jesus not say you lay to see and see the law? Because we had the law. We beat people over the head with the law. Okay? That, because that made a difference. I can see why they did it. Because they had to separate a show, but there's a difference between us and the other Protestant churches who already knew what the difference between us and the Catholic churches were. But they overemphasized it. And in 1888, we tried to bring it back, but it didn't come back. And here's where we are today. But we know that the law and the grace are together. Jesus is inside you. We don't need the Ten Commandments. We don't need the ceremony all because it is all inside us and we're doing and if we have any questions, we have the Bible. Not the seven damn beliefs. And these are good and these are important because we don't have to dig through and get them again. But we have the Bible to have this is fine. So we will go out for the foot washing. The men will go straight back into the fellowship. All the ladies will go to, as you're going out, to your right, down to the end. There's a blue building door in the deepest will help you there. Then after that is done, we will come back in here to the sanctuary and start in the front row, sit every other day. Or start in this back. Either way, it comes out the same. Uh, and when you partake of the bread and the juice, what are you putting inside you? Symbolically, you are putting Christ inside. Now remember, just the bread alone 
That didn't do the church, the lay of sins, any good, does it? We're still don't have the robe of Christ around us. We need his blood also. They both have to be inside us, in our arteries and veins. So we have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us as we go to celebrate foot worship, to show our humility and our need to get rid of the sins and then need come back to celebrate us putting figuratively your blood and body back inside us so that you will be inside us and that all our actions will be representative of you. Yes, things are coming. Hear me, Mom.